All right. Hello, Periscope. Hello, Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. I want to make sure my little uh, indicator. Okay, there we go. Now we're live for sure. Okay. So here for your weekly live prophetic word. Hope everybody's been having a good week, all things considered. I know that it's an intense time. I know that it's a time that the country is changing. Our country is changing. The world has changed. The world is never going to be the same again. Whatever world we knew before 2020, that world is gone. And in a, here in America, our country is changing. We're going through another massive cultural shift, uh, probably a legal shift. Uh, just so many different things are happening. And so now is the time, if you've never made your relationship with God strong, now's the time. If you've never made your relationship with God sure, now's the time. We've had months now of being on lockdown, only being able to go out for groceries and medicine at best. And with, you know, curfews in major cities and all that. So now's the time. Okay. So anyway, uh, let's get to today's prophetic word. Now, before I say that, you know, uh, I don't do this for money because I do this because God called me to do it. But if you want to sow into my ministry, uh, I put my cash app and I put my Zelle on my Facebook Live page. My cash app is dollar sign DMT2, two capitalized, not the number two. And my Zelle is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com if you want to bless my ministry, where that money goes is to help me expand my ministry, more books, more audio tapes, and then I'm working on some ministry for the homeless. So I really am using donations to expand what God has called me to do. So if you'd like to sow into my ministry and bless me, then God bless you. That's the way to do it. Okay, let's jump into our uh, prophetic word. And our prophetic word for today, as given to, my, given to me by the Holy Ghost, is imagine. Okay, the prophetic word for today is imagine imagine okay so let's say a quick word of prayer and we'll dive right in thank you god for this day thank you god for an opportunity to serve you and your kingdom thank you oh god for being able to sow into eternity oh god that what we're doing will have eternal repercussions because only what glorifies you only what we do for christ will last so thank you for an opportunity to be a part of your eternal kingdom because you don't owe us anything but you reach forth your hand in mercy and grace to give us a chance so we say thank you. And right now, God, I just feel led to pray for the nation that even as judgment is here, oh God, that you would help us to see your outstretched hand, even in the midst of judgment, that we can still see that your grace and your mercy are right there and your love is right there. If we turn from our wrong ways and turn to you, oh God, so give us a new heart and a new spirit that we might as a nation turn to you and hear your voice so we can do what you say do so, so that you might heal the land. So breathe through me. Oh, God, fill me through the Holy Ghost. I surrender my entire self to you so that you can bring forth what you want uh, brought forth in this broadcast. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Now, when you come on the broadcast, please like and share because we want this to go as many platform, on as many platforms as possible because whenever the Holy Ghost releases a prophetic word, we want as many people as possible to see it, okay? All right, so today's prophetic word is imagine. It's imagine. And it's based on Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. That's a very familiar scripture for some of you. And for some of you, this might be the first time you're hearing about it. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Jeremiah is known colloquially as the weeping prophet. And what that means is that Jeremiah had to prophesy during a time where Israel and Jerusalem was being destroyed because of their disobedience. So very similar to where we are now, where the judgment of God was on the nation of Israel very, very strongly because they would not hear him and they would not be faithful to him. And so a whole lot of ugly things happened to them. They got taken into captivity. So Jeremiah was called to prophesy during a time like that. So he cried a lot. He, he wept when he saw what was happening to his fellow countrymen and to his country and how they wouldn't obey God and how judgment after judgment after judgment would fall and they still wouldn't turn, okay? And so 
he's also the prophet that said he got tired of that. So he just shut his mouth and he said, I'm not going to say anything anymore. And then he said, when the word of the Lord hit him, it was like fire shut up in his bones. Uh, that's where that phrase comes from, because if you have any kind of church background, you've heard that phrase. Well, it comes from Jeremiah. And what he meant was, is that the prophetic word of God hit his spirit so hard, hit his body so hard, he couldn't hold it. Okay, he had to open his mouth and prophesy even if he didn't want to. Many prophets have experienced that. I have experienced that. I have been anointed so hard to where I had to open my mouth. It hurt. Okay, because sometimes the word of God can fall on you so hard. If you're reluctant to open your mouth, if you're a prophet, however, God needs you to open your mouth and release the word he gave you. And sometimes it'll come with fire and it'll hurt you so bad. You can't sleep, you can't think, you can't do anything until you open your mouth and say what the Lord told you to say. So I can relate. That's what that's all I'm trying to say. I can relate to what Jeremiah is saying. That's just a little bit of background on who this man is. Finally, you hear me say it almost every week now. He is what is known is that it, he is what is known as a major prophet. But by major prophet, it does not mean his message was more important than the minor prophets. It means that his book was longer. That's all major prophet means. Jeremiah, Isaiah, long books. Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, uh, you know, shorter books. Haggai, Malachi, short books. Not that their message wasn't important, okay? But Daniel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, very, very long books. Major prophets, that's what that means, okay? All right, so Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. I'm going to read this verse in many translations. I'm going to start with the Brian Study Bible. Call to me, and I will answer and show you great and unsearchable things you do not know. New Living Translation. Ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. English Standard Version. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Uh, King James Bible, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee, shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Christian Standard Bible, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things you do not know. Wow. Okay, what a promise. Okay, now this is a bit of a dangerous prayer. <laughs> If you pray this to God, then you got to get ready for the answer, okay? If you tell the Lord, if you pray Jeremiah 33, 3 unto the Lord, you call unto him and you pray that verse back to him, then you got, got to get ready for the answer, okay? But part of what the Spirit of God wanted to me to share today was the idea of it's time for us to begin to imagine, to open our minds, when you begin to imagine, see, there's two things that God has given you that are unlimited. One of the things that you have that is unlimited is your ability to believe. Another thing that you have that is unlimited is your ability to imagine. You can believe anything. You can believe and have higher and higher and higher levels of faith. You also can imagine in an un, almost unlimited unlimited capacity. When I say almost un, unlimited, I mean, we can't imagine quite like God can, but I mean, for us humans, that's what I mean. But in terms of what goes on here, so what happens in your heart, your inner man and your mind is that you, you can begin to paint things on a canvas. You can begin to put images and ideas and sounds and concepts together on the inside of you, in your spirit, in your heart, in your brain because those are not all the same thing, by the way. When I'm talking about your heart, I don't mean your physical blood pump. I mean your core, the thing that's at the center of you that makes you you, that's actually inside your spirit. Your spirit is the breath of life that God gave you that animates your soul and your body. And your mind is not just your physical brain that regulates your body, but it's also your ability to imagine. It has that kind of component to it too. And so the Spirit of God was showing me, me about how it's time for us to begin to imagine some new things. Imagine what can happen once we make it out of this pandemic or once we make it into the next phase. 
imagine what God can begin to do and what you can begin to do because all the old stuff has been torn down. Think about it. We'll, if you if you listen to me and you're a believer, we will never do church again like we did church before. Before March, all up until March, we did church one way and all that got torn down. Since we've been on lockdown, we ain't never going back to the way church was. Church is never, ever, ever in America going to be what it was before the pandemic hit. So the Holy Ghost says we should start to imagine, because I've been imagining some things too. The Holy Ghost said we should start to imagine. Imagine. So let me ask you a question. What if you could build your dream church? What would that look like? And I don't mean you being the pastor. If you are a pastor, of course, but I mean uh, if you're just a congregant, if you're just a member, okay, you don't have to be the pastor. What if you could build your dream church? What would that look like? What would the worship be like? What would the word be like? What would the fellowship be like? What would the time be like? What would it be like? What would the people be like if you could go to a dream church? Think about it. What if you had a dream relationship? What if you had a dream marriage? If you could build your dream marriage, just no holds barred, no limits, what would that look like? If you could wake up every day, turn over and look at your spouse and say, now that's exactly what I had in mind, what would that be? Okay. Uh, what about your children? If you could uh, have any child that you wanted or the children that you have, if they turned out to be exactly what you had in mind, what exactly would that be? What would that look like? If you had enough money to finance all of your dreams, think about whatever your dreams are, because everybody has different dreams. And that's one of the, the most beautiful thing about being a human being is that we're, we're of the same substance, but we're not all the same. What if you could uh, build uh, whatever dream you wanted, but you had the money? You had the money to do, whether that's going back to school, maybe it's a dream home, maybe it's starting a ministry, maybe it's starting a foundation, maybe it's starting a band or a choir, maybe it's uh, starting some new athletic events that the world has never seen before. What if? What if? What if you had enough money and enough time to write that book that you always wanted to write? Like you've had it inside of you for a while, but you're like, now I can finally afford a professional editor. I can finally afford to get a professional cover done, whatever. And that, that book could go from here to out here. What would that look like? What would you say? So the Spirit of God put it in my heart to begin to release those words, to begin to release those concepts that it's time for us to imagine. Now, let's look at the scripture and see what God actually says. Okay? All right. <clears throat> that word call, okay, in the Hebrew, and I'm reading out of Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. You can look it up. Um, that uh, word is uh, 7, 7121. Kira, and it says to call, proclaim, or read. So when God says call to me, remember I told you, you can pray scripture back to the Lord. That's actually the wisest way to begin your prayer life with Christ is to study the word of God and pray scripture back to the Lord and say, Lord, you said. So God says we can call, we can proclaim to him what we want, but we can also read. You can read your journal to God. Did you know that? You can read the Bible to God and say, Lord, you said in your word, did you know that? So it says, call to me. In the Hebrew, it's, it means near, with, among, or to. That's why you have to go back to the original language because Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic are more expansive than English. So God says, call near me, call with me, call among me, call to me. All those are terms of intimacy and closeness. And then God says, and I will answer you. I will respond and show you, okay? Now, in the Hebrew, that word and show you or and show, it means to be conspicuous. Let me say that again. It means to be conspicuous. You know what that means? 
God says, I'm going to show you plainly. I'm going to show you openly. I'm going to show you in an unmistakable way. Oh, my goodness. And now that's the way I want God to show me stuff. Make it clear. You know, we had that old church saying, make it plain. God said, I'm going to show you conspicuously. It will be obvious. It will be unmistakable. Unmistakable. It will be unavoidable. A lot of people say things like, how do I know if God is talking to me? God just told you, if you call him and ask him to, he will show you in a conspicuous way. God will say, this is me, and you won't miss. He says, and I will show you great and unsearchable things. Okay, now that word great, it means great, but it also means older, and it also means insolent. Wow, so that means there's some ancient truth and that means there's some sassy truth. <laughs> that means there's some truth that's going to smack you in the face, smack some other people in the face. That means there's some truth that has some bite to it. Okay? Then it says great and unsearchable things. Okay? To cut off, make inaccessible, and close. In other words, God is saying, I've got some stuff in my treasure chest. I've got some stuff in the invisible realm. I've got some stuff in the heavenly realm that is not easily accessible to earth unless I release it. God says, I know some stuff and I got some stuff that is not available to man unless you ask me. It's not accessible, okay? It's enclosed. God said it's secret, it's treasure, it's mine. But if you ask me in a very conspicuous way, I will open it up. Okay, that's what it means, great and mighty things, hidden things, unsearchable things. Of course they're unsearchable. God has hidden them from us. He has to show us. And let me stop here and say, this is what a lot of people don't understand. A lot of unbelievers, this is what they don't understand about God. You cannot fit God into your mind. You cannot make sense out of the Lord. The mind is not the vehicle, is not the connector that God gave us to deal with him. The connector that God gave us to deal with him is our spirits and the faith inside of our spirits because your faith is unlimited. You can believe anything. That's what you need to deal with an unlimited God. But you can't squeeze him down in it is. And that's a mistake a whole lot of unbelievers make because they keep saying, if it doesn't make sense to me, it can't be true. They keep saying, if it doesn't make sense to me, then it can't be real. That is incorrect. Okay. You're trying to limit God Almighty to what you know, to what you think, to what you've seen. And God says, that's not possible. You can't limit me. God said, my things are unsearchable. They're hidden. They're cut off. I got some stuff that you can't even, you can't even work up on. I have to show it to you. Okay? God says, you do not know great mighty things that you do not know. So that's why humility is so important when you're dealing with God. It's important to humble yourself and bow down before the creator and go before him and tell him that you don't know nothing, but you want to know something. You want to know things that only he can reveal. Okay? And so the Holy Ghost is telling me that it's time for us to begin to imagine, to, to use our imagination to <clears throat> begin to open up to the possibilities of what can happen, what you can do, and what God can do. Now remember, when you're dealing with imagining or dreaming or anything like that, it is at least, well, it's actually a three-part process. It's normally God, self, and others. So there's normally a portion that you have to do, but you can't do it all yourself, so you have to enlist other people, but you have to surrender all that to the Lord from the beginning and get his plans and get his leading and find out what it is that he wants. So normally it's God, you, and others, okay? But <clears throat> you have to do your part. That's why you hear me teach so hard against the genie concept because the genie concept of God is this, this teaching that has infiltrated the American church that has made people feel like they don't have to do anything. They can just sit back and just pop their fingers and stuff's just gonna fall out of the sky. No, you have to do your part. But this Holy Ghost is saying that we begin to need to open up. We need to begin to open up. And do you want to go back to school? Do you want to build something? Do you want to know some stuff that you don't know now? 
For example, let me challenge the believers, let me challenge the people of faith that are watching and listening to me. Do you think that what you know about God right now is all there is to know? Do you think that whatever level of power you walk in from the Holy Spirit, whatever level of anointing you have uh, based on the gifts, helps, administrations, prophetic, tongues, whatever, the fruit is different. Love, joy, peace, that's fruit, that's different. But I'm talking about the giftings right now. Whatever kind of gift you have from the Holy Ghost and whatever level of gift you walk in, let me ask you, do you think that what you know about God right now is all there is to know? Then what if you went before God and you asked God to expand the power that you walk in? What if you asked the Holy Ghost to show you a new mantle? a new kind of power, a new kind of anointing, because understand this about the anointing. Every anointing from God is sp specific. It does what it's designed to do. So in other words, the anointing for healing heals. It's not anointings for like knowledge. The anointing for the word of knowledge is different from the anointing for healing. Those are two different anointings. Like the anointing for marriage, being able to get married, is different from the anointing for fertility. That's why a whole lot of married couples are married, but they can't seem to conceive because a fertility anointing is different from a marriage anointing. So understand that the anointing, the rubbing oil of God, is designed to do specifically what it's designed to do. Okay? And so whatever level of anointing you have, whatever mantle you have from God right now, do you think that's all there is? Do you think it's possible for you to walk in something new, something that you've never seen or walked in before? That's the kind of challenge the Spirit of God is issuing today. If you've walked in healing all your life, amen, praise God. You don't have any problem with it because you have faith for healing. What about tongues? Have you ever walked in tongues? Because remember, tongues is not just a prayer language. Remember that the miracle of Pentecost was not prayer language. The miracle of Pentecost was that all the people there from the different, different ethnic groups and backgrounds heard what they were saying in their own language. The miracle of Pentecost was multiple language translations. Have you ever walked in that? Have you ever experienced that? Okay. What about a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom? Word of knowledge and word of wisdom are two different things, okay? Word of knowledge is something, is information from heaven that you didn't know before God reveals it to you. A word of wisdom is how to apply that information the way God would do it. So in other words, the way heaven does things, the way God does things in his kingdom, God has to reveal to you that this is how I do it. Okay, I'll give you one of my favorite examples. One of my favorite examples is a lot of people don't know how to build their business or get favor with people. And the way you get favor with people, according to the word of wisdom from the Lord, is you become a servant. Because he said that what most people do is they try to lord it over other people. They try to exercise their power, big eyes and little use. The Lord said, but he that shall be greatest among you shall be servant of you all. The Lord says the way to greatness is service. And once again, the Lord is right. If you make it your business and your business, no matter what you do, plumbing, electrical, copy editing, no matter what you do, if you make it your business to serve the needs of your clients and you make sure that they get what they want out of your service, your phone will be blowing up. You have so much business, you can't keep up with it all because that's how you prosper is you serve. You don't try to lord it over people, you serve. See, that's a word of wisdom. That's the way heaven does things. That's why Jesus got the name above every name because he served all of humanity and he served the Father. He served, he became a servant and he got lifted up and is Lord of all. Can you see it? That's not the way man would do it. That's not the way we do it. We get famous, man. We get a little bit famous or we get a little bit of money. You won't even speak to your friends no more. <laughs> You ain't speak to folks that you used to know once you get a little a bit of fame or a little bit of money. Okay, but the Lord said that's not the way heaven does things. Can you see it? 
So what I want to say in wrapping up is the challenge today from the Holy Ghost is to open your mind, to use your imagination, to expand your mind, to not think that whatever it is you currently know about God is all there is to know. Whatever it is that you currently know about life is all that life has to offer. Whatever it is that you've currently achieved, that that's all you can achieve. And whatever anointing or grace that you walk in from the Spirit of God, that that's the only one to walk in. Can you see it? All right, amen, praise God. Now, I feel edified by that. I feel blessed by that challenge myself. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be on that. I'm going to start asking the Lord some stuff because whatever it is that I'm walking in, I want more of God. I want him to reveal more stuff to me. I mean, you know, we're going to spend all of eternity with God revealing something new to us every day about himself, about ourselves, about the expansiveness of God and the expansiveness of the life that he creates. And he's never going to run out because he has no limit. He has no upper limit. He has no side limit. He has no limit to his depth. That is not something you can fit in the human brain. Okay? That's just something you have to believe by faith and experience it every day. So I'm excited about that because coming out of this pandemic, coming into whatever the new thing is, I want to walk in some new stuff. I want to master what he's already given me, but I want to go ahead on and get some new stuff. Okay? So that's the challenge, and that's the prophetic word for today. Now, when you see me close my eyes, I'm praying in tongues and asking the Holy Ghost, is there anything else he wants me to release? So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, all right. What the Holy Ghost just told me is uh, some people experiencing my broadcast right now, there's a lot of unbelief. Okay, unbelief will keep you out of the promises of God. Let me explain it to you. When God says something, when something comes out of God's mouth, literally reality begins to form. Uh, it forms in the invisible, and then it can also come out here and live in the visible. But whenever God says something, it is by definition true. And whenever God says something, reality, atoms and molecules, spiritual substances, whatever, begin to form and coalesce. And whatever God's, whenever God says something, it happens. It happens as soon as he says it because God's word creates reality. That's not something you can figure out. That's not something that, that can be, be uh, shrunk down and compressed to make sense to your brain. And the Holy Ghost is showing me that there's unbelief. Unbelief is what keeps people from the promises of God because what you're saying is, if I don't understand it, it can't be true. If I can't see how it would happen, that means it can't happen. What you're saying is, if I can't do it, that God can't do it. No, that's wrong. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean that the Almighty can't do it. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Okay? Just because you can't figure out a way for it to be done doesn't mean that God can't do it. There's a miracle in the Bible where the, uh, the, the country was stricken with poverty. They were having tough times. And a prophet prophesied and said, by this time tomorrow, there's going to be abundance. There's going to be uh, an outpour. There's going to be a, a, a breaking forth of wealth and riches. And there was a man that said, no way that could happen in 24 hours. And then the prophet said, <clears throat> because you have not believed God, you're going to see it, but you're not going to participate with it. And what ended up happening was that man saw all the people rushing to the city to get all this treasure. And he got trampled at the gate. Whew. That's the danger of unbelief. The danger of unbelief is when you are trying to limit God to your resources, your understanding, your mind, your experience, your knowledge. You cannot limit God to, to the level of man. So that's what the Holy Ghost is trying to say, that we're going to have to get rid of our unbelief. That if God tells you something, it's true by definition. It's true because God said it. And what you have to do is you have to keep building up your faith, keep reading it in the scripture, keep confessing it until your belief comes up to what the Lord said to you. I have been through that process and 
continually going through that process. Nobody arrives. We just arrive at different levels and then God calls us up to the next level. But I've been through that process and I've seen the transformation in myself to where the Lord said something to me and it sounded crazy to me when he first said it. But I had to learn how to use my faith and begin to confess what God said and begin to say what God said. And the more you confess it, the more you read it in the word and the more you pray it back to God, you start to believe. And then as your faith begins to come up, it begins to manifest out here in your life. I have seen that happen. I have experienced it. The fact that I'm sitting here on this broadcast prophesying now is a result of that process I just gave you. Because when I were, uh, when you're a prophet, you're born uh, uh, a prophet. You're born apostolic, and I don't, you're not born saved. You have to get saved. Don't get me wrong. But the anointing, that calling, is on you in the womb, and you are walking in the apostolic and the prophetic from a child. But at some point, God is going to interrupt you and tell you this is who you are. Like he did with Joseph, like he did with David. He told David he was a king. Nobody believed in David except God. Did you know that? Absolutely nobody believed in David. His father, Jesse, didn't believe in him. Samuel thought one of his brothers was going to be king. When he went to fight Goliath, nobody's like, everybody's like, what are you doing? Nobody believed in David but God. Nobody looked at David and saw a king but God. Okay, uh, uh, he told Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was a licensed Christian killer. I'm not making that up. Read the book of Acts. Saul of Tarsus met Jesus one day on the Damascus Road and became Apostle Paul and wrote three quarters of the New Testament. After spending his adult life arresting and murdering Christians, he met Jesus and became an apostle of the New Testament to both Jew and Gentile and wrote 75% of the New Testament. You see that? That's what I mean when I say, me being here right now is because the Lord told me. And when he first told me, I was like, are you talking to me? I turned around and see my dad was in the room. I'm like, you, you sure? You talking to me? But I had to believe, I had to get my faith up to what God is saying. And that's why I'm here now. And so that's what I mean when I say, everything in God's kingdom works just like that. God will tell you something, and when you first hear it, it's like when God told Abram and Sarai, changed her name to Abraham and Sarah, y'all gonna have a baby, okay? Well, Abraham was 75 when God called him, okay? In a year before Isaac was born, God reminded him what he said, and God said, y'all gonna have a baby. And both Abraham and Sarah laughed. People only talk about how Sarah laughed, but Abraham laughed too. Go read it in the scripture. Abraham laughed and Sarah laughed and God said, did I say something funny? And Abraham was like, God, I'm old. Body don't work no more. Sarah was like, God, I'm old. Body don't work no more. And God said, oh, well, <laughs> I said, you two <laughs> go have a baby. And they did. And Abraham fathered Isaac at 100 years old. That's in the scripture. I'm not making that up. That's another example of what I mean about how if the Lord says something, it by definition is true, but what you have to do is get your faith up to where you can believe that God is able, because God is not asking you to make his promises come to pass in your strength. God is telling you that he will make his promises come to pass in his strength, but your portion is to believe it, and then it'll live out here. Can you see it? So if you're an unbeliever looking at me right now, I challenge you to question whatever it is you think about God and ask God to show himself to you in a way you've never seen before, in a way that is unmistakable. If you are a believer, the Spirit of God says to you to open your mind to what the Almighty can do and do not limit him through unbelief based on what you think or what you can do. Because the only reason we're here right now is because God gave an old man a baby. God gave a 100-year-old Abraham a baby. That's why we're here right now. He's the father of our faith. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for everybody that watched me live. Thank you for those of you that are watching on Periscope, Facebook Live, YouTube. And for those of you that are listening to the podcast or watching any of the replay, God bless you. I appreciate you. 
you know that I'm dropping uh, more and more content. Uh, I have my uh, broadcast here Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have my No More Genies on the second Thursday of, of each month. I just did one on the Parable of the Talents last Thursday. When I'm releasing new music, I do that on Friday, New Music Friday at noon. Uh, I have a whole page set up for my 150 hymns project because uh, I've written one hymn for every song. So we're going to end up with 150 new hymns based on each one of the individual songs. I have my quarterly prophetic devotional. The new one's coming out next month because we're going into quarter three. So I have all kinds of stuff going on. So remember, again, if you want to bless me or donate to my ministry, that's where the money's going to help me expand my ministry so I can get out of me all the things that God has put in me. And I say that always to let you know that I'm doing what I'm saying. I know we have a deep problem with spiritual leaders that say one thing and do another. They're doing that. They're talking, but they, well, I'm telling you that I'm doing what I'm saying. I'm actually giving birth to the things that God has called me to give birth to. And I have so much more stuff to do. I have a couple of new books that I can't tell you about yet that I'm so excited about because they're going to be life changing. Revelation and understanding and things that the Lord has shown me that I got to put together in book form that I cannot wait to get released because it's going to change lives. One of the things I'm dealing with is something fundamental that I discovered that a lot of Christians don't know about. And once the Lord started showing me, my mind was blown. I'm sitting there with my mouth open. And I said to myself, why isn't this a part of our Christian training across the body of Christ? Why don't we all know this? And so the Holy Spirit led me to write a book. So I, you know, can't tell you about it. Can't give you details yet, but I'm so excited I can't make you understand how excited I am because I know by the grace of God it's going to change lives. Okay? Some decisions you make in life completely alter the course of your life. Like there was one way you could have gone and then you made this choice and now your life ain't going to never be what it could have been. It's never going to be. Okay? And so when we're in them critical times, we need to know what the Lord is saying. We don't need to be leaning to our own understanding. And so that is part of what this is about. So I can't wait to get it out. I can't wait. So uh, God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be here my regular time next Sunday, 2.30 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check your inbox or your mailbox uh, for email reminders uh, for when New Music Friday is coming out so you can be a part of my new music drops. All right? Amen. God bless you. And remember, remember, it's time to imagine. It's time to take the limits off of God, to call unto him and ask him to show us great and mighty things that we don't know and to get rid of our unbelief so we can believe that if the Lord says it, it can come to pass and it will come to pass if we believe. Amen and God bless you. See you next time.